Majora's Mask, Chapter 8, The Scar, Part 1. Link closed the door behind him, blocking out the sunlight and the buzz of the townspeople. It was replaced with the tower's darkness and the sound of rushing water. The wooden pole cut through the vast floor, rising above them to turn the rhythmic gears. At first, Link could only see Tattle. She was a beacon in the dim, cool building. His eyes adjusted to find a grown man waiting in the room. He still wore the elegant purple robes with the bulbous backpack of masks hunching him over. He was tall and lanky with short red hair on top. The mask salesman smiled at them as they approached. Link clutched his chest as he did, bent over and limping. Why, hello there, he said. Tattle did a better job hiding her fear, but she still remained behind the scrub. You look like you've been having a great day. Seriously? Link thought. He gave no response. He was very clearly on the verge of death. The mask salesman continued anyways. Were you able to recover your precious item from that imp? Link almost answered, but another thought occurred to him. From his perspective, didn't we just walk out that door? They'd gone back in time to the moment after talking to him, which would have taken place maybe a minute ago. Well, Tattle started, surprising Link. As far as you can tell, we just walked out the door and came back in. There was no time for us to get the ocarina back. The masked salesman acknowledged Tattle for the first time, never losing his smile. But he turned back to Link instead of responding to her. Well, did you just walk out the door? Link wasn't sure what to say. Why do you think we did it? I hate it when someone answers a question with a question, <laughs> the salesman said. His eyes widened when he saw the ocarina in Link's hand. He ecstatically took two giant steps toward him and bent down to grab his shoulders, shaking the small child. Oh, you got it! You got it! I guess he got it! The tattle said defensively, flying to push him away. Now please get off him! He's hurt! The mask salesman stopped, as if noticing Link's injuries for the first time. The Deku scrub could barely react to being shaken, putting all his effort into not throwing up. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, the masked salesman said, clearing his throat and backing away. <clears throat> well, looking at the condition you're in. He turned away from them and walked to the other side of the clock tower. There's no time to lose. Where are you going? Tattle said. The salesman didn't answer, continuing toward the wall seemingly just as dark as the rest. Link watched him, albeit still hunched over in misery. He squinted closely to realize there was something large hidden near the wall. A black sheet completely hid it, blending in with the darkness and making it unnoticeable. The salesman whipped the cover off, tossing it behind him to reveal a grand piano. It was made of fine brown wood. Three rows of keys were layered atop one another, and there was no cover to hide the piano strings. Its back ran against the wall vertically rather than horizontally. It was a beautiful piece of art that must have been lovingly crafted. Huh, wow, Tattle said. How did we not notice that? The salesman slid his heavy backpack off and placed it beside the instrument. A creepy mask fell out of its many pockets and clattered to the floor. He ignored that, pulling a bench out from under the piano and sitting as he stretched his fingers before the mighty piano. <laughs> Do you have your ocarina ready? He asked. Link nodded. Then listen to me. Please, play this song that I am about to perform, and remember it well. Link glanced at his ocarina, overwhelmed by fatigue. Even blinking was difficult, let alone standing. Yet this small, blue ocarina once again had his life in his hands. If whatever the salesman showed him worked, then so be it. But if it didn't... Link didn't have the strength to go back up the stairs to Clocktown. Tattle, if it doesn't work... His squeaky voice pained him, but the fairy interrupted. No, Link, it's going to work. Don't say that. Get ready to play, and this will all be over soon. 
Link timidly brought the ocarina to his snout, shaking as he looked up at the pianist. Follow along after me, he said, allowing his fingers to flow across the keys. The notes came out confidently, and Link closed his eyes, straining to recognize each note. He'd always had a knack for playing music by ear, but now he had to do it while on the verge of death. Link hummed to himself as he fingered his ocarina without blowing. Tattle ignored him, clearly enraptured by the piano. It's beautiful, she said. I've never heard anything like it. What is this song? Huh? Uh, Link, what do you think? He shushed her, trying his best to concentrate on the notes. Shh. Okay, okay. Don't mind me here. A poor, musically inept fairy. The masked salesman continued, though the song was rather short. He looped the same phrase with only slight variations. Eventually, a soft whistle from the ocarina joined in. Link winced at the incorrect note and tried another one timidly, nodding before he played two more. He was quick to join the masked salesman's performance and match him note for note. Tattle was clearly left out between them as the salesman played the keys of the piano and the Deku scrub played the ocarina. When the masked salesman broke out of his original musical phrase, Link somehow followed the unexpected change, as if anticipating it, and already knowing the song by heart. How do you... Tattle stammered, not finishing her thought. Link continued playing, eyes closed. He allowed the music to take over him. Even when he got lightheaded, Link never fought it. It reminded him of the Song of Time's Mighty Grasp. When he could play no more, the ocarina's notes continued in his mind. He dropped the clay instrument, which rolled away from him as he fell back. Back. Away from the clock tower. There was emptiness. Link eventually spotted someone far off. There was a single Deku scrub though without red feathers cascading from the top nor a crop of blonde hair. This Deku scrub was not shorter or squatter than him either, as most typically were, but the same height and stature. Instead of hair, three green leaves stuck out apart from each other. They were twins. The two wooden textured creatures walked up to confront one another, Link peering intently at the new visitor. Uh or maybe I'm the visitor. <laughs> Who are you? Link squeaked. When you find my father? The Deku scrub replied in Link's exact voice. Tell him that I love him. I didn't run away. I just wanted to see the world. Please, tell him where I am too. So he could say goodbye. I don't... Said Link, shaking his head. Who's your father? Wh where can I find him? Goodbye, Link. I am in your debt forever. You freed me! And then the Deku scrub turned away, walking off into the darkness and leaving Link behind. Wait! What are you talking about? He called out, taking a step to follow him. Where are we? Link's next step met thin air, and then he fell, spinning through the darkness until... He opened his eyes. There was no more music, though he heard wood clatter on the stone floor. He was still underneath the clock tower, accompanied by the sounds of turning gears and rushing water. Tattle watched him intently, floating beside the masked salesman who had once again equipped his massive backpack. Link looked down to find the source of the fallen wood. His own face stared at him from the floor, his Deku scrub face. It was frozen in time, watching with those familiar, glowing eyes. Is that a mask? He wondered. His attention turned away from the frozen image of his Deku scrub face when he felt his hands. Link held them out and thought he was dreaming. Link! Tattle exclaimed as a smile spread across his face. My true face! He realized. He'd grown two feet taller and his wooden textured skin was tanned and soft. He wore a full green tunic. His brown boots were no longer toddler-sized. His hat was not disproportional to the rest of his body. His red belt was again tight around his waist, and he was himself. Ta ah. 
Link stopped short on his exclamation, accidentally speaking from his throat. Now he could speak normally, without the high-pitched, squeaky handicap. He took a deep breath, relishing in the weight of his human chest. He was no longer dying. Every injury had been healed. His sword and Hylian shield were once again clad on his back. The hero of time had returned. Navi! It worked! It actually worked! It sounded like music to hear his own teenage voice again, and he turned to look at the fairy who'd remained by his cursed side. He ran his fingers through his blonde hair and blinked his blue eyes. Well, it, it did, Tattle said, for some reason losing her excitement. But I don't know who Navi is, Link. Link's face betrayed his confusion, forgetting that emotions were much harder to hide in his human face. What is she talking about? Before he could ask her, the masked salesman spoke. He'd been standing there patiently the entire time, smiling. This is a melody that heals evil magic and troubled spirits, turning them into masks. The song of healing. What he'd done was a miracle. He has an instrument that channels the magic of the gods, too, Link thought. I am sure this song will be of assistance to you in the future. The boy looked back to the mask on the floor and picked it up. He examined the Deku scrub face thoughtfully. The mask did not have eye holes, nor any for a nose and a mouth. It would be impossible to see or breathe while wearing it. Oh, ha, yes, the mask salesman said, as if reading his mind. I give you this mask in commemoration of this day. Fear not. For the magic has been sealed inside the mask. When you wear it, you will transform into the shape that you just were. When you remove it, you will return to normal. Link's immediate reaction was fear. I'm never putting on this thing again, he thought. What would happen if I put it on and it didn't come off again? Yet, it was probably premature to get rid of it. He looked down at his belt, realizing there was no way to attach it. The mask didn't have a hole or string anywhere. While the belt did have a small, tight pocket for his ocarina, he'd have to carry the mask until he found a bag. Link retrieved his fallen instrument while it was on his mind, slipping it back in its pocket. Ah, <sighs> finally. Where it's supposed to be. <laughs> now, the salesman said, recapturing Link's attention. I have fulfilled my promise to you, so please, give me that which you promised me." The salesman held out his hands, palm up, expecting his reward. Link's face flushed bright red. He'd forgotten the deal. The imp's mask, in exchange for m my body, he remembered. Tattle had been the only reason he'd remembered to come under the clock tower at all. Link managed to meet the salesman's smiling eyes. Ah, uh, he stammered, turning to the fairy for support. Tattle was gravely silent. <laughs> Don't tell me, he said. His smile began to falter, and his eyes opened wide with fear. I mask. You did get it back, didn't you? The rushing water far below was his only answer and the shock on his face quickly melted into anger. <laughs> he screamed in anguish, reaching out for Link. The young man backed away, forgetting for a minute that he had his sword. The salesman lifted him off his feet, shaking him furiously in the air. Hey! Tattle shouted, but she backed off as soon as she saw wildness etched into the salesman's eyes. <laughs> what have you done to me? He exclaimed. Speaking while being shaken proved rather difficult. I didn't remember. I just... The salesman abruptly let him go, and Link fell to the floor on his bottom, quickly scrambling to his feet. <laughs> if you leave my mask out there, something terrible will happen, the salesman said hands on his head as he rocked back and forth on his heels. 
He managed to calm down though, taking in deep breaths. <sighs> I didn't mean to cheat you, Link answered. I was dying. That didn't appear to make a difference to the masked salesman right now. That mask, that was stolen from me. It's called Majora's Mask. Instantly, Link pictured the heart-shaped mask in its terrible eyes. <sighs> it is an accursed item from legend that is said to have been used in an ancient tribe in its hexing rituals. It is said that an evil, wicked power is bestowed upon the one who wears the mask. Link vividly recalled the Skull Kid's spells. He summoned the moon, cursed him into the body of a Deku scrub, and killed Tail. <laughs> According to legend, the troubles caused by Mature's mask were so great that the Ancient Ones, fearing such catastrophe, sealed the mask in shadow forever, preventing its misuse. But now, the tribe from the legend has vanished, so no one really knows the true nature of the mask's power. When the salesmen finished, they allowed the soothing sounds of the clock tower to fill the silence. I knew it was the mask. Link thought. Somehow, I've always known that was the true enemy. <sighs> but I feel it, the salesman said again, looking up at the ceiling as if to plead with the gods. I went to, to great lengths to get that legendary mask. When I finally had it, I could sense the doom of a dark omen brewing. It was that unwelcome feeling that makes your stand on end. And now, the imp has it. He turned back to Link. I am begging you. You must get that mask back quickly, or something terrible will happen. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. You must do it. The salesman stopped, eagerly awaiting Link to answer him. I... The boy started. But the salesman interrupted him. Really? You'll do it for me? I never said. I was certain you would tell me that. But I don't. You'll be fine. Surely you can do it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do! Link yelled. The masked salesman finally gave him room to speak. I've already been to the top of the tower to face him, and I lost. I fell off the tower and almost died. Until you healed me. All I have is my sword, and that's not anywhere close to what I need to stop the moon. Have you been outside lately? It's huge! There's nothing one person like me can do to stop it. The boy wore his frustration all over his face, waiting for the salesman to say something. Finally, he did. So, what else then? Are you going to go back to Hyrule and let all those people die? Are you going to let your dear friend's brother die? Your horse, Anju. He remains looking down at the shocked Link, waiting for an answer. How do you... It doesn't matter. What I do know is that you can't leave this place before you've chosen between the light and the dark. You must face the Skull Kid, Link. You can't leave before you've done that. Light and dark? Link asked. What are you talking about? How do you know so much about me? Where did you come from? The mask salesman only laughed. <laughs> You're wasting your time talking to me, Link. You must go out and stop him before it's too late. But I don't know how! Link yelled once again. Why does he constantly avoid all of my questions? Come on, Link, Tattle finally said to him, gesturing him toward the door. Let's just go. Link hesitated. Now he felt a little guilty. The masked salesman had just saved his life, and Link had gone back on the deal. Nonetheless, he agreed with Tattle, walking with her up the staircase. He paused at the set of doors before returning to Clocktown. <laughs> Believe in your strengths. The masked salesman encouraged him from behind. Believe. They stepped into the first day's warmth together. 
and I can finally enjoy it, Link thought. I have my body again, and I'm alive. He was still in disbelief. When he looked at Tattle floating beside him, he was surprised when a pang of sadness overpowered his joy. The fairy who'd originally walked out of those doors was now a pile of ashes in some forgotten timeline. That image momentarily overpowered him. I'm scared, Link, that Tattle had said. I don't want this to be the last time I ever see the sun. And that mask, this Tattle said, interrupting his thoughts. Link tried his best to swallow his feelings and give her his attention. The Skull Kid uses the power of Major's mask to do these terrible things. We've got to do something about it. And what would you suggest? Link asked as the carpenters looked up from their work. He didn't pay attention to their disgruntled expressions, likely wondering where the Deku scrub had gone. Um, Tattle said, trailing off. Oh, the Great Fairy could help us. She watches over everything, and just between you and me, the Skull Kid is no match for her. Uh, you've already said that, Link said, walking into the town square. Word for word. Well, Tattle scoffed, following him. What would, uh, past me have done? Link sighed. <sighs> I'm not sure she died. Well, I know that, Tiku. Uh, um, I, I guess I can't call you Tiku Boy anymore, can I? No, you can't, Link said flatly, holding up the Tiku scrub mask to further prove his point. So, Tattle said choosing to ignore his short tone. Seriously, what do we do now? I'm guessing I'm stuck with you until we find a way to stop Majora's Mask from killing everybody? Yes, uh, that's what it looks like, Link commented. Tears kept threatening to take over. Don't cry, Link thought. You should be happy right now. But even if he had his body back, Tattle was dead, and no one in the world even cared. The fact that she kept talking to him now, regardless of her past life's memory, made everything so much harder. Are you okay, Link? Tattle asked. I thought you might be a little happy, you know, now that you're not a Deku scrub anymore? Yeah, I, I, I just... Link trailed off. Just what? asked the fairy. Link didn't answer. <sighs> um, where are we going anyways? Link stopped walking when he realized they were halfway through the East Clock Town Plaza. He'd subconsciously ventured to the Stockpot Inn. Um, you realize she won't remember you, right? There's no reason for this Anju to help you. I know, Link said, continuing onward regardless. The fairy scoffed, but followed anyways. They entered the lobby to see Anju behind her desk, looking down at a notebook opened before her. She was, once again, wearing that same blue dress. Her short red hair was neatly done, and she looked up with a forced smile on her face. Hello. Uh, welcome to the Stockpot Inn, she greeted. Link watched Tattle's expression, realizing this was her first true time-travel-affected interaction. It was eerie interacting with a person who suddenly didn't remember you, he also noted Anju's strange familiarity again, as if he'd known her before Clock Town. Deku Scrub drama had prevented him from questioning her about it, but now, this next first meeting jogged his memory. Had she been to Hyrule before? Link wondered. Link and Tattle were completely unaware of how creepy they looked just standing there, until Anju grew visibly startled. When Link became self-aware and walked toward her, the innkeeper tensed, as if not sure what to expect. Link fumbled for the right words. Have... have you ever... been to Hyrule? Hi Hyrule? Anja stammered. I don't believe I've ever heard of it. You've never heard of Hyrule? He was flabbergasted. That's impossible, Link thought. Sure, Tao hasn't, but another human? You've never heard about the largest kingdom in the world, center of practically all global power. Anju merely shook her head. 
Daphnis Nahans in Hyrule? The king? His daughter, Princess Zelda! Where is this place? Anju asked after a moment's thought. It's... Link stopped when he realized he wasn't sure, at least in relation to Clock Town. I, I came from underneath the Clock Tower, so I, I'm not sure what direction it's in. So Hyrule is an underground city? <sighs> no, Link said. It's... W where is here, anyways? How come no one has heard of anywhere else? Uh, we're in Termina? Anju answered. I'm not sure what else to say about it. Has no one ever left? Do people not come and go regularly? Well, from other corners of Termina, Anju added thoughtfully. Link sighed. Uh, but please, sir, I'm not sure what this has to do with anything. Do you have a reservation, or is the only reason you came here to ask me about Hyrule? Link shook his head. Sorry, yes, I have a reservation. Uh, all right, then, Anju said, returning to her business voice. She scanned the notebook below her. Name, please? Link. Link? I don't have a Link in here. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I meant to say Ink. Link quickly corrected himself. He ignored Tattle's gaze behind him. Mr. Ink? Anju threw him a skeptical look, but continued nonetheless. Uh, well, Mr. Ink, I have you down for an afternoon arrival, but I guess you can check in a few hours early. Your room is in our knife chamber, on the second floor. Here is your key. She handed it to him, and then Link nodded and turned away. Thank you. He walked up the staircase to his room, and Tattle followed. What was that all about? The fairy asked. And did you just steal someone's reservation? <laughs> yep, Link answered. Me and... the other Tattle. <laughs> he stopped himself from saying. He swallowed nervously. <laughs> yeah, the first time around, I accidentally stole someone else's. I don't see the harm in doing it twice. You're making someone sleep out on the streets? She said softly. That's terrible. It's for a greater cause, right? Link asked as they reached the second floor. Uh, sure, Tattle said, clearly withholding something else on her mind. Whatever you say, Mr. Ink. Tattle! Look out, you! Tattle turned around, but she was too late. The strain of the wooden wheel wedged into the platform reached a climax when it hit the ground. The wood violently shattered into millions of pieces, and they showed no mercy. Tattle was instantly bombarded with bullet-like shards, and Link curled into a ball to protect his face. And there they were, underneath the moon's ball of fire, Tattle was in his hand, dying just as he was, some unseen injury within her ball of light. Thank you for not leaving me, Link struggled to say. No problem, Deku Head. Link couldn't hide his concern from Navi. They were in the Temple of Time beside the Master Sword returned to its pedestal. So, I'll never see you again. Navi only continued to float there, just out of reach. You're going to become someone else's guardian, aren't you? The fairy still didn't say anything. Can't we just have one more day to celebrate? That would make it harder for me to leave, explained Navi. This isn't easy, Link. I hope you know that. But it has to be done. You can't cling to your childhood anymore. Link, once again defeated, only stood there. I didn't expect you to forgive me, Link. Tattle finally said, turning around to face him in the darkness of the sewer system's maze. Thank you for not throwing your glass of water at me as soon as you saw me. I deserved it. After what I said to you back in the hotel room, I thought... I thought I could do it on my own. I just... 
wanted my brother back, and I didn't realize how messed up everything the Skull Kid and I did to you was. But now I know. I want to make sure you get your body, ocarina, and horse. It's my fault you're in this mess, and I'm not stopping until we get out of it together. Thanks, Tattle, Link said. I really didn't want to stop the moon from falling by myself. Link awoke from a light sleep to find the hotel room's darkness. The images of the past faded instantly. Link lay there for a moment quietly. The dreams of Navi hadn't gone away. If anything, they were stronger. Why? He had already come to terms with his new fairy companion, who slept on the other bed's pillow. She was there, and the first tattle had told him he was a useless weakling and abandoned him this very night. Even Navi had left him. But this fairy hadn't. But this fairy isn't Navi or Tattle, is she? Not really. Link hated that the relief of getting his body back was so short-lived. Turns out, getting uncursed hardly fixed any of his problems. Epona was still gone, but now this new land, Termina, as Anju had called it, seemed to be in need of him. If he left on his horse, could he live with himself knowing that he doomed Termina to be a barren wasteland? Would the power of Majora's Mask spread past Termina into Hyrule? Returning to his body wasn't enough. How can I fight that evil mask? It had killed Tail with a flick of a wrist. It had cursed him to inhabit the body of a Deku scrub. It had summoned the moon itself from the heavens to crash into Clock Town. What could possibly rival that? Link turned in his bed to see the ocarina sitting on the bedside table. My ocarina proved itself, he realized. The ocarina's notes had lifted the curse. True, it had been the Song of Healing that had done the job, but he didn't think any instrument would have harnessed its powers. That was the key, his ocarina. But was he ready to face the Skull Kid again? Could another song defeat him? Confronting the imp at the top of the tower might have to wait. But he killed Tattle. No. Tattle was across the room from him asleep. Yet, after he returned to bed, the dreams still tormented him.